Hey everybody, Zach here for the Friday Fishing Report. This week we have a pretty cool video for you. Um, instead of actually doing a fly tying tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about chronomid coatings. There's a lot of different stuff out on the market, from UV resins to super glue to Sally hands as hard as nails. Um, you name it, I've probably tried it. Um, I'm always looking for new stuff as well. Um, there's a lot of differences between all these products as well. So different coatings have different properties and they do different things to your finished fly. Um, so yeah, let's hop down to it and uh, let's explore the world of chronomid coatings. All right, so let's talk about a few of these different uh, coatings here. So we got some super glue, hard as, hand, uh, hard as nails, and um, solar as bone dry. So just a couple notes on these. Solar as bone dry is one that um, some people have had uh, reactions to. Um, the main thing when you're using any UV resin um, is to make sure that you have a very well ventilated area um, so that you're not breathing in these fumes um, super heavy and don't cure it too fast either. We'll go over that once we get to actually coating a couple flies here. Um, so one thing to note with solar is bone dry, uh, my labels come off on this one, um, is when it gets cold it actually crystallizes. So I'm just going to hold this up here and I think you can see that there's just a big clumpy uh, mess there. There is a way to fix this. Um, one way that people like to do it is by throwing in the microwave for 10 second intervals. Make sure you take the lid out because it will melt the brush that's on there. Um, personally, that's not my favorite way. What I like to do is I like to put on the kettle, put the, um, the whole jar um, in a dish and fill it up to about where the lid is. Let it sit in there for about a minute or so and you will see that it's completely um, um, liquefies it again which is pretty cool so just because it crystallizes doesn't mean it's gone bad it's still good um, just throw it in a, in a bowl with a bunch of boiling water and uh, it'll be good to go again next one is crazy glue and wopsy zemet so these are the super glues these are probably my favorite first coat that I like to use um, we just got the crazy glue just started playing around with it I'm convinced these are exactly the same product just in a different bottle the main thing with these is they come with a brush which is there um, so it makes for easy application um, I've had this bottle of um, zappy gap for a little while here you can see this little insert up here is usually on the inside of the bottle it's actually glued itself to the lid what I like to do is I when that is in a fresh bottle and it's still on there um, I actually like to take the brush and I just wipe off the excess on the bottom part of that little cone that's on the inside. In here I can kind of still do it on the inside, I doubt you guys can see that, but inside there there's a little ridge, I can wipe off any excess, which is pretty key. This guy here, the thing with the crazy glues, like I said, just make sure it has a brush applicator. Same idea here, it's got a little, um, little ridge on the inside that I can wipe off any excess. So you don't want to be overcoating. What will happen with super glues if you overcoat your chronomids with super glue, they actually turn white. They get really chalky. Um, so yeah, a little tip there, build it up in smaller layers. And like I said, these are kind of my favorite um, first coats that I like to use. It kind of seals everything together. Nothing unravels on you then. Um, all these chronomids here that I've recently tied um, for a customer at the shop here, um, they all have a first coat of um, super glue on them and I will then um, <clears throat> continue to coat them with Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails, which we'll talk about next, or Solar as Bone Dry. Now, Sally Hansen's has been around forever. Um, you get them at any makeup nail polish place. Um, one thing with this is it does get quite thick as it's been exposed to the air. So what I like to do before I use is I actually hold it in my hand for a little while, warm it up. I'm sure you could do the same kettle and boiling water trick as I do with the bone dry um, to thin it out. But if you haven't seen this stuff before, same idea. Like I said, it's a little thick right now so it just needs to warm up a bit. I will just wipe off all the excess and build up very thin coats. This is key when you're doing this. You want these patterns to be very slender. Um, so build everything up in very thin coats as you coat them. Um, if you start putting it on too thick and they start to get too bulky, they don't get that look that, you, that everybody wants, those nice slender ones. All right, there you have it. Let's head on over to the vise and I'll show you guys uh, what each of these does in action. Well, here we go guys, I've got uh, four identical chronomids. Uh, for argument's sake, they're all the same thread, all the same wires. I have done nothing fancy to these, it's literally just a thread body and a double wire rip. Um, guaranteed to catch you fish, they are going to get them. Um, so anyways, I did this just so we can see how each different um, coating here 
um, affects the thread. So first one I have here is the Wapsi Fly Tires Z-Mint. This one, like I said, I like to use super glue as a base coat for everything anyways. I have not done that with any of the rest of these. This is just gonna show you a basic idea of, um, of what happens to them once they get hit. So like I said, you usually get too much on the brush there. So I just like to scrape off any excess. And using the rotary feature of my vise, it's definitely a plus for this. I like to start at the back and I just hold my brush there and I just let the glue soak into the thread as I go up to the top. And there's our first base coat. Looks pretty good. One thing that I noticed with the super glue is that, before I put this away, um, is it's more of a color preserver, which is what I like. So it doesn't really darken the thread at all. It keeps the thread kind of bang on to what you saw when you started tying the fly. So this is a big deal, especially when you're doing blended thread chronomids. You don't want colors to darken too much. Um, I've noticed that reds and blacks and browns, when you blend from black into any of those, they just look all the same color. They darken up, which isn't ideally what you want. So I usually hit them with a coat of super glue first to kind of set the color, and then I use my other coatings from there. So that's the Wapsi Fly Tire Z-Mint. Um, get yourself some whiskey corks. Um, as I tie these and I coat them, I put them all just like this into the cork and I find it holds them all very well and it just allows all that excess glue and stuff to kind of work its way towards the head of the fly um, where you want the bulk anyway. You want everything nice and skinny at the back and then as you get forward, things get a little bit thicker. So that's the first one. That was the Wapsi Fly Tire Z-Mint Brushable Zappa Gap. Um, this is the bigger bottle. We carry them in a smaller bottle as well. Literally, if you're going to be tying a lot of chronomids, um, you're better off just spending the extra $2 and getting the bigger bottle. So here is fly number two into the vise, as you can see, exactly the same as the previous one. So a light olive ultra thread and 70 denier and a double wire rib. This one is going to be the crazy glue. As I said in the intro before, I am convinced that these two products are exactly the same. There's no difference between them. Um, Personally, from using these a little bit, I do prefer the brush on the Wapsi um, Zappa Gap a little nicer. This one I find is a little stiff and a little bit short. Um, you can always taper these with some scissors and cut them down. But again, take off any of that excess glue and just hold it in position here and rotate that vise around, coating the entire fly like so. So there you have it. First coating of the crazy glue. To me, naked eye, um, looks the same as the last one. <laughs> so I'm not gonna talk too much more about that. I find these two are very, very similar. I'm putting these aside in order so I can actually get a still of everything here as well. All right, third fly going into the vise. Once again, exactly the same, light all the thread. And this one's gonna be the Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. Um, I got my girlfriend to buy this for me. This is 800 crystal clear. Does not matter? I don't think it does as long as it's a clear coat. Um, one trick that she taught me is that once these have been opened, the kind of oxidization kind of makes them kind of thicken up a little bit. Give them a good shake. And like I said before, I like to hold them in my hand or put them in my pocket to warm it up. And it kind of loosens up the viscosity quite a bit. So it makes it a little easier to work with. Um, this one, I just redid uh, my bone dry here with the kettle. So I put it in that warm water and it uh, helped to liquefy it a bit more. And I noticed the same thing happened here. So again, take off any excess. This stuff I find is a little bit thicker to work with. You can probably see the different viscosity there. And once again, just kind of set my brush and rotate that vise, coating the entire fly. Like I said, it does build up a little bit more. It's a little bit thicker than the super glue. It does create a pretty solid coat there. I'll just finish that off right at the head. So one thing that I've noticed, I don't know if it's really picking up there on the camera, is that the Sally Hansen Hard as Nails um, does kind of darken the thread just a touch. Um, so it's not as, it is, like the, the super glues definitely hold the color a little more true. This I find darkens it just a smidgen. Um, 
which is kind of cool because it gives you a whole different variety of thread colors to play with, right? So if you have your basic light all thread and you want it to be a different fly, throw in a different coating and it changes the color of the fly completely, which is kind of cool. So that guy going into the cork, we'll put that aside. One final fly here. This one is going to be the bone dry, so the Solaris bone dry version. Like I said, people, actually, before I get to that. So this one I put the kettle on and you can see how much thinner that is now. Um, it's not all clunky, hasn't, um, it's not all crystallized like it was before. And as I was saying before, um, some people have had reactions to this. Um, I've also heard that about other resins as well. I really believe that the main difference is, um, or the main thing to keep in mind is to use this stuff in a well-ventilated area. Um, don't look into the lights, they are super harmful to your eyes, um, but definitely the resins, use them in a very well ventilated area. Don't be like huffing the, <laughs> huffing the fumes and stuff as you're curing this as well, and don't cure them too fast. Um, so if you cure this stuff too fast, it actually shoots off vapors. Um, what I like to do is kind of shine my light and I point it down at, the, at my bench and then I'll hit the fly and I take it away. And then I hit the fly and I take it away as I'm rotating the rotary feature on, on my vise. Um, I find it cure, slows down the curing process a little bit. Um, it makes it a little bit safer for you as well. So like I said, some people have had reactions to this, but I've heard that about other resins as well. I've been using this stuff for years and years and years. I've never had an issue with it. So really varies by person, I believe. Um, I really haven't had too many issues with it. Um, so like I said, just like the other ones, it's got a nice fine brush on there. I like to take away any excess and again just dab it on the fly and rotate that vise give this a good coating if i need to get some more which i might have to i will so again build this up in really thin coats as i said before i always have a base coat and then i usually get three to four coatings on a chronomid before i'm done with them and the beauty of the UV is if it's too thick in one spot, just rotate your vise. It'll kind of seep through the thread. You can work with this stuff until you hit it with the light. So I like to continually rotate my vise. As I mentioned before, I'm going to turn my light on. I'm going to flash it at the fly. I can take it away. You can see a couple of little vapors came off there. And I'm going to flash it again and take it away. I flash it again and take it away. And now I think it's got a decent basic here, I can continue to slowly rotate. It usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds, not too, too long to cure this stuff. It does dry tack free, which is nice. When Loon was the only product on the market, I used it a lot. I found they were always tacky and eventually they would yellow and crack. I haven't had the same kind of issues like that with the Solares since I switched over a number of years ago. Just give that a good coat. Another note with the UV resins is just because I've turned off my light there, I'm not gonna to touch it for a couple seconds because what happens is that resin continues to cure um, even after the light's off of it. So keep that in mind. If you touch it, sometimes it can get hot. Don't get this stuff on your skin and then hit the light with it, it burns. Um, even just holding the light to my hand, I can feel it getting warm. So this, these lights are quite powerful. This is the Solar Res light. Um, it comes with a rechargeable battery. We sell them at the shop. Probably one of the better lights that I've used personally. So first reactions on this stuff, I do know from experience that the Solarize does darken thread. Um, so it's a big difference between probably these two flies. I hope that shows up um, and you can see a difference there. So I do find the resins do darken the threads quite a bit. So it completely changes the look of the fly. So as I mentioned before, my favorite preference is to start with a thin coat of super glue and then continue on with Sally Hansen's or Bone Dry. If it's a completely mylar or tinsel body fly, um, I'm not worried about the thread as much. So I will just directly coat it with the Bone Dry and you're off to the races. Well, there you have it everybody. Four coatings on four different chronomids. Um, I hope that gives you an idea of kind of what the different properties are of each kind of coating. Um, again, I like to coat mine with one to up to sometimes four coatings depending on which um, which coating I am using. Some are a little thinner than others. So they take a little more time to build up. So I try to let them dry completely in between coatings. 
Um, if I'm in no rush at all, I will kind of tie up a bunch, coat them one evening. I will go back the next evening and coat them for a second time, let them dry again for another 24 hours and possibly finish them in a third or fourth coat. Um, so definitely play around with the different coatings. It's kind of cool to, to get different looks out of um, just something as simple as changing the coating that you put on them. Hope you guys learned some stuff. If you have any questions, please come into the shop. You can visit us at 78 East Broadway, where we are open seven days a week. Um, or even give us a call at the shop, 604-872-2204. We're always more than happy to talk fly tying with you. We've always got new and fun materials coming into the shop, so definitely come on by and check it out. Um, we hope to see you guys soon. Talk to you later.